Hello friends, this is Krista Elisha and I am bringing you the word for the week and um, not just the word for this week, but this is the word of the Lord for the month of December. So I've just been praying and asking the Lord, um, you know, what does he have in store for us this December? And the Holy Spirit said that this will be a December to remember. And uh, I thought that, that sounded like a really, you know, uplifting message. And uh, I said, well, what do you mean, Father? Like, what, what are you talking about? This is gonna be a December to remember. Because um, so far 2020 has been a year that not many of us will forget. <laughs> and um, I heard him say, Krista, tell my people that the season of delay is over in giving birth to your dreams and your destiny. And I was like, yes, that is so good. Um, Cause I'm taking this word for myself. It's an amazing word. And uh, so I just have been praying into this and asking the Lord like to expand, to show me um, what we can expect for the rest of this month. And what exactly does he mean about no more delay in dreams and in destinies? And um, I don't know about you, but I have been seeing the number 111 all over the place or 1111 all over the place. And speaking, um, you know, in the Bible, the number 11 traditionally speaks about transition. It talks about um, judgment um, and it also speaks about, which look, judgment in God's eyes is not a bad thing. And um, because God, he, through the blood of Jesus for his people, God judges anything in our life that wars against his love. And it's to remove anything that wars against his love and his ultimate plans and purpose uh, for our lives. So we don't have to be afraid of judgment. Um, as long as we are giving him those things in our lives that do not look like him that are um, actually causing harm to us and to him and to others so 11 is a number that has to do with transition with judgment it also has to do with uh the arising of new heroes heroes of the faith if you look at hebrews 11 that whole chapter they call it the um the hall of faith in scripture it talks about all of you know our forerunners in the faith um that went before us that god honors not because of their mess ups but because of their feats of faith and so um i believe that we are in a season of forerunners of the faith, new forerunners, new pioneers um, of the faith are coming to the forefront in this hour. Um, and not just specifically speaking about, you know, uh, ministry and church per se, but heroes of the faith in government, heroes of the faith in uh, the marketplace, heroes of the faith in family, heroes of the faith in uh, school and education. We are seeing a rise of, of people um, that belong to the Lord that are arising to their proper position um, because they were born for such a time as this and they are taking their places in the hall of faith in heaven. So specifically, um, I was just asking, you know, God, is there a verse, maybe a Bible verse that has to do with 111 or 1111 that you specifically want to highlight to me for the month of December? And he spoke to me Ephesians 111. So I went there and this is what it says. It says, through our union with Christ, we too have been claimed by God as his own inheritance. Before we were even born, he gave us our destiny that we would fulfill the plan of God who always accomplishes every purpose and plan in his heart. Wow, I love that verse, so good. And you know, God has dreams for our lives. You know, I think a lot of times we are you know, we focus on the dreams that maybe we have for our own lives, you know, the stuff that, that we want to accomplish and, and the legacy that we want to leave, the mark that we want to leave on the earth. But do you realize that God 
literally he gave you your destiny before you were born this scripture says he gave you your destiny he put those dreams inside of your heart you know why because you are god's dream wrapped in flesh you are god's dream in a body before you ever existed before you were a twinkle in your mama and daddy's eyes you were a happy thought in God's imagination. And so much of what people dream for their own lives and have passions for in their own lives are actually God dreams that he placed in each one of us before we were born. And um, I just felt that there was this encouragement from God. You know, so many times we see, I see um, other believers who they won't take a step forward in their dreams or in their, uh, what they feel could be a destiny moment because they're so afraid that they're going to miss God or that maybe they don't feel like they have a clear go ahead. And I, I just felt like the Lord wanted to encourage somebody today that if he placed those dreams in your heart and if they are God sized dreams, if they are going to impact the world for his glory, if they are going, if those dreams are going to help people and turn people to him they're gonna leave a uh, a holy mark on planet earth then he he's already given you permission because that dream is stirring in you and he put it there so you have permission to step out into your dreams um so i continuing to pray over the month of december um I went into a vision and in this vision, I saw that there was a veil between heaven and earth that was so thin. It was uh, strange, almost like a, a film or like a membrane. And um, I saw an angel come down and he just barely like ripped it open and it was like this flimsy thing and it just opened up and then i saw like what looked like um water but it was mixed with like glory so it had all these different colors in it and it was sparkly and um it looked like i don't know something in like a disney cartoon it was very cartoonish and um it just began to uh, flow and roll down from heaven and it rolled and it, like snowballed and then when the snowball stopped it stood or it sat straight up and it was a gigantic baby <laughs> and it reminded me of baby new year um, from those old claymation uh, cartoons and it was happy and it was fat and it was jolly. And um, I felt like the Lord was saying that for many of you who have felt like the the purposes and, and the destiny that God has had for your life, that it's just been something impossible to give birth to, that what was really small, God is actually blessing and it is going to have a snowball effect into next year. Um, so whatever you've been working on this year, those of you who have who have been operating and walking in your calling and you've picked up the call and moved forward um, into what Jesus has called you to do, the things this year that felt delayed and that felt small have actually in the spirit been snowballing and they're gaining momentum and by the new year, the new year, they're going to sit up and they're going to be huge and um it is going your joy is going to be full you are going to be so happy um so heaven is literally giving birth right now and destiny's callings uh destiny's callings miracles promises they're all being birthed you know just like the month of december is the month that we you know, traditionally celebrate the birth of Jesus, even though that's probably not terribly accurate. Um, this is a season of conceiving and giving birth to the prophetic promises and destinies that God had planned in our lives. Um, 
And the Lord spoke to me. He said, can you not discern this new day of destiny breaking forth around you? The early signs of my promises and plans are bursting forth. And that's in Song of Songs 2.13. Um, the Lord led me to um, the, the story of Judah and Tamar um, in the book of Genesis. And um, I believe it's Genesis 38 and how specifically Tamar had been married to Judah's oldest son, but Judah's oldest son was wicked and he died. Um, and then Judah gave his second son uh, to be Tamar's husband because it was the law then that if an older brother died, it was the next brother's responsibility to give an heir to, to his brother through his brother's wife. But that son didn't want to do that because he didn't want to have a child that was going to be his brother's heir. And so he took advantage of Tamar and he slept with her, but he would not get her pregnant. And God saw that that was, felt that that was evil. And so that brother died. So there was a third brother and his name was Selah. And uh, Judah told Tamar to put her widow's clothes on to go live in her parents' uh, house again, and that when Selah was old enough to marry her, he would send her or he would send for her. But, you know, Judah had no intentions on doing that because he was afraid that his third son, his third and only son, would also die over Tamar. And so he never sent for her. So a, a few years later, Judah's wife, she dies. And um, Judah decides that he's gonna go into uh, the town where Tamar is from and um, to, for a sheep shearing uh, festivities that were happening. And uh, Tamar hears about this and she goes, she takes her widow's clothes off, she goes to the crossroads and she s puts a veil over her face to conceal her identity. And Judah comes by with his friend and propositions her. He thinks that she's a temple prostitute. Um, now, Tamar looks at Judah, does not reveal who she is, and talks Judah into giving him her staff or his staff and his seal and um, in exchange for relations. And um, he does. Tamar gets pregnant. Uh, Judah finds out about it. He's really angry. He wants Tamar stoned. And when they go to bring her, she brings out Judah's very own seal and staff. And Judah, totally ashamed of his awful behavior, says, she is more righteous than I. And, you know, leave her be. But he was never with her again. And so Tamar, she got, she was pregnant by Judah. She gave birth and she gave birth to twins. And she named the twins, um, their names meant uh, breakthrough and dawning and our dawning of the light. Um, and what's really amazing is that when you look at the prophetic significance in this story, Tamar had two wicked husbands. She was promised Selah. Selah means to pause. It means actually to delay, to tarry. And she was, uh, she was denied um, having been married again to conceive an heir. She was going to be a widow. It was going to be illegal for her to marry any other man and she was going to be alone without any children. She had really been done wrong but she got to this place in her life where she said I am going to go to the crossroads. I'm going to wait at the crossroads until I have what has been promised me and she went there and lo Lo and behold, the very man who had not fulfilled his promise, and Judah means praise, um, 
propositions her and he gives her the very things that literally represent his authority and his household. And this is a word for somebody because then T Tamar became pregnant with twins and what she gave birth to was the dawning of a new thing in her life and breakthrough. She received her breakthrough after years of waiting. She received her breakthrough and her breakthrough was her promise of having her own son and an heir to her first husband. It was her promise that she would be a mother. And um so that is a word for somebody. You, a lot of people out there watching, you are at a crossroads. You have to, it's time, maybe you've been done bad in the past. Maybe you've been disappointed. Maybe you've had evil men that did not fulfill their promises and they've taken advantage of you. And you thought that your miracle, that your promise was gonna come through a man, but it didn't and those things died. And you have been waiting and waiting in your widow clothes and your mourners clothes and the Lord says it's time to get up it's time to take off that widow's veil and come and meet me you are at a crossroads and if you will praise me at the crossroads then I will impregnate you with your purpose with your promise and you will give birth to breakthrough and to the dawning of a new thing, a new age, a new era in your life, a new season. Amen. So what's really interesting is that um, when Jews, when you see the word dawning and bright and shining, when they, when you hear the dawn, they believe that the dawn is something that happens over and over and over again because it does. The sun rises new every day. And so there's this idea with Jewish culture is that the dawn rises on a new season and it sets on an old one. And so this is what the Lord is saying. If you come to the crossroads, you're at a crossroads, praise me at the crossroads. I will come, you will have an encounter with me. I will give you my authority and I will give you what I've promised you from my house. And um, you will give birth to breakthrough and to a new day, a new era, a new season in your life, amen. Oh, that's so good. So um, I, I felt that the Lord wa wanted to, um, you know, he was telling me that uh, many have laid down the call. You know, maybe it was because of fear or insecurity um, that caused you to lay it down. Maybe, um, you know, it was because of naysayers. Maybe it was because, you know, certain relationships in your life uh, did not make a way for you to be able to do that. Whatever it was, the Lord says that um, he is extending a call again. You know, we go through cycles and seasons in our life. And um, you know, the, the book of uh, Lamentations says that for everything under the sun, there is a time and there is a season. And the season that we're in right now is that everything is coming full circle everything is coming full circle and the Lord is giving you anyone out there who you have, you heard the call years ago, you know, maybe you heard the call at the beginning of the year, but then you have been waiting. You've been afraid. Maybe you dropped it. And with dropping that you've dropped your dreams and you've dropped your destiny. And the Lord is saying, I am extending a second chance to those people that we are coming back around full circle to start again at the originating point to pick up those things and to run with them again, to carry the dream instead of abort the dream, to carry the promise and prepare for the promise and not abort the promise, okay? Um, so I wanna bless you guys with that too. You know, others, um, you you might have, 
picked up your call and you've been in a process of preparation, you know, but then you felt like you've been stuck, you know, and, and it, the Lord reminded me of the Israelites when uh, they crossed over, you know, the Red Sea, God parted the Red Sea for them and they went over into the wilderness before the promised land. And, um, you know, they had all this crazy stuff there. And for 40 years, they walked in circles around that mountain when they could have much faster, very quickly, just a year's time went over into the promised land. But see, God had to wait for all of Egypt to die out in the Israelite people because what was in their minds, the world. See, Egypt represents the world and the world systems and the world's values, okay? And many of us will go around in circles around this mountain until finally all of the way that the world does things finally dies off and we are in agreement with what God says is ours and we can look and we can see the promised land and we can look at the giants in the promised land and not be phased and not consider ourselves grasshoppers before moving in you know so but we have to go the reason I truly believe that if the Israelites had learned their lesson and had gotten the the stinking thinking of Egypt out of their minds, then they wouldn't have had to wait so long before they crossed into the promised land. And so many of us, you know, maybe it has been 40 years that you've been on a process that you feel like you've been walking around the base of the mountain. Maybe it's not been that long. Maybe it's only been a few years because the Lord has had you on an accelerated process and you've partnered with what God wanted to do in your life. Um, and that's the trick right there. It's asking God, what are you trying to teach me in, in this cycle? around the base of the mountain. What are you teaching me? And so that I can partner with you instead of grumble and complain and miss my promised land, you know? So, um, but many of us have, have been in this process and you might just have felt stuck, but even like a baby in the birth canal, okay? But the Lord says that you have been prepared, that you are getting ready to cross over and just like a baby begins to when you know comes out of the mother they call that crowning and the lord says that i have placed an overcomer's crown on your head his plans and purposes for your life are about to burst out. They are going to come through a new cycle. A new season is getting ready to start for you. And um, there is a suddenly breakthrough coming. Um, the water is breaking. Okay. Um, and the pressure that you're feeling right now, many of us have felt so much pressure and so much warfare. And it's because... Um, you're feeling the labor pains that are pushing you into your next level of glory, into your next season, into your next promotion. Amen. Um, he is bringing you into a wide open place because he delights in you. And you have been faithful in the little things. So now he is committed to make you ruler over much. Oh, that's such good news. Um, your head is going to spin when you see all the blessings that he is going to pour out on you. So don't give up. Push through the opposition. Push through. Don't cave into the pressure. Pray until something happens push. It's time to push. Pray until something happens. Okay. Um, big babies take a long time to incubate. So the longer your waiting has been, the bigger your breakthrough is going to be. You know, um, the Lord gave me John 16, 21, and it says, uh, it's where Jesus was saying, just like a woman giving birth experience is intense labor pains in delivering her baby. Yet after the child is born, she quickly forgets what she went through because of the overwhelming joy of knowing that a new baby has been born into the world. Don't 
abort your promise. Care for it, prepare for it. Don't cave to the pressure, push. Instead, push, pray until something happens. Your suddenly breakthrough, your dawning of a new day, of a new season is coming. It's right around the corner. Um, so I just, um, I'm so excited for this word. It's um, for this month, God is going to do incredible things. Um, you know, we are coming full circle. Um, we are coming back to the place where we um, have originated to start a brand new thing um, and to do a brand new thing in the new year. <sighs> wow, how encouraging is that? So, um, I just want to pray for you all and I want to bless you and uh, then I'm going to go ahead and I'll let you go and take this word, go pray on it, um, you know, make war with it. If this is, you know, how you've been feeling, praise God because you're at a crossroads and that is going to be the place where the Lord is going to, um, where he's, he's going to give you the seed to birth your promise and your twins are going to be named breakthrough and the dawning of a new day. So, all right. So father, I just thank you so much for every single person under the sound of my voice. God, I thank you that you are the God of the breakthrough. You are the breaker. You carry the breakthrough anointing. And it's because all of your waves and your breakers crash over us with your love. And uh, God, I just thank you that um, you have such great plans for all of us, God, because we are your dream come true. Just like you are the man of our dreams, Jesus, we are your dreams come true. And so Father, I just release a grace over everyone that's listened to this word that they, if they've maybe sat down their calling and their destiny or their prophetic promise, God, that they would pick it back up in this season. God, maybe they are sitting at the crossroads and and they have been wearing a, uh, a widow and a mourner's gown. God, I just pray that they would take off their mourning and that you would give them a garment of praise, that you would give them the oil of joy for mourning and a garment of praise instead of heaviness over the last season, over the way that they were done wrong. And Father, that um, as they praise you, that you are going to give them everything that they need to birth the promise that you had given them, God. And um, Lord, I just... Um, I just thank you for what you're going to do. I thank you that uh, the season of delay in 2020 that we have experienced um, where we've only been able to start small things, that God, the delay has only caused there to be a snowball effect and that everything is going to come together and it's going to cause so much impact in the new year. And God, I bless you. I praise you. I thank you. And Lord, I just release this hope, this comfort, and this joy over this video and all of my friends that are watching in Jesus' mighty, holy, wonderful name. Amen. All right, guys, I love you. Um, tune in to uh, my Facebook page uh, to follow me more and all my little posts and updates. You can also click subscribe here on, uh, on YouTube and that really helps me out. You will be getting all the notifications if you hit the little bell um, when I upload new content and new videos. Um, and Thank you so much for being a part of my life and uh, getting to um, just allowing me to share breakthrough moments with you. You know, if this is how you feel um, and this word witness with your spirit, please share, 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 share to encourage somebody else and um, let me know in the comments how it witnessed with you. Okay. Love you guys. Bye-bye.